welcome everybody to Dueling Sorcerers. I would like to welcome our sorcerers. We have Brett Feig, who is VP of Talent Acquisition, formerly at IPG Media. Welcome, Brett, hey to guys. the show. Yes, hold on, hello. Hold on, here it is, ready? Dre, just let it run. Hey, yo, turn here it you up go. a little bit. Hey, yo. Turn it up. It's for anyone. There you go, Feig, I got you. I got both, <laughs> I got both. <laughs> that, was, right, that was my that. entry music? That was it, man. That was it. That was that it. Was like, that was yeah. I'm sorry, dude. I that didn't have that didn't have the, the gravitas and like the big pounding bass and the the lights and like. It's oh, you didn't see the lights on your oh, it's your virtual background, dude. There were lights and everything. Yeah. We were all <laughs> head bobbing for you. <laughs> and also welcome Mike Cohen, aka Batman, who's joining us as uh, the dueling sorcerer against Brett. But this is a collaborative effort. Mike Cohen, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. So Mike, you own Wayne Technologies. I wanted to give that a little plug. Tell us a little bit about Wayne Technologies, because oh, some good uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we're a, a contract uh, sourcing company um, who does sourcing uh, all deliverables based instead of hourly, so it's more transparent, and we have access to more tooling than any, literally any company on the planet. It's super fun to play with. So uh, that's us in a nutshell. Well, without further ado, what are we going to source on for today? Uh, we're gonna do a little DNI sourcing and kind of show our our approaches. So I'm gonna take a bit of a, a, a boolean uh, approach to this, <laughs> and I think Brett's gonna uh, Brett's gonna take more of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brett's gonna uh, do a lot of like research, web scraping. Like, you get that right, Brett? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take a little bit more of an acoustic approach, right, and uh, take it really, really basic, but show how you can get at uh, some really good diversity and inclusion without needing, you know, different tools, without without needing, uh, you know, LinkedIn recruiter license, and take it back to some of the more basic things that I think are mm. really untapped. I awesome! Love that. I'm so excited. I'll let you guys take it from here. I'll be monitoring the chat and the Facebook Live. We'll see you at the end of the show. See you then. So. Uh, I think, Brett, we were going to start with, like, how do you build a, a Boolean uh, string, right? Because a lot yeah. of people are, are interested in that. And so I got all the stuff you need to do a DIY Boolean uh, string, right? So first, you get your string, right? You'll see here. I have some awesome. Got my Next, string. Yep. You've got your, your Boolean cubes, right? You'll see here that I'm doing diversity and inclusion. I've got... Both beef uh, and chicken, let beef, the record reflect. Yep. Yes. Beef, boolean, yep. And then in order to really build the string, you, you need glue, right? And if for whatever uh, reason it's a bad string, it doesn't stick together, have some tape happy as well. Now, is that glue toxic? Would there be any concerns if your, your children are going to be in around or maybe wearing the boolean string? No, oh God, come on. I was, that was really not necessary. We'll find out in the next one hour. Uh, my guess is no. My hope is no. Uh, <laughs> there we are. So that's how to build a Boolean uh, string. Uh, now let's talk about how to build a Boolean string, right? So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen and kind of go over some of the just general capabilities. I'm gonna start going through things like LinkedIn Recruiter and uh, Google and Bing searches just okay. to show kind of what's capable uh, on each of those platforms. Brett's gonna then jump in on his side and blow your minds with some of the research piece. And then I'm gonna come back and kind of uh, execute on some of that. And then he's gonna do the same, just so we know what we're expecting. Yep. All right, cool. Share our screen. Um, fantastic. All right, so first thing, I know I'm on the blue devil, but here's the deal. Um, one of the things that I built, and Brett's going to show a really cool way to do this, which I think is probably easier, um, is having a, a Boolean builder. So something where you can paste in a whole bunch of terms, right? And it's going to spit out your or statement or your and statement, or we have around statements in here as well. This is going to help us, uh, particularly with like DNI searches, where what we're going to be pulling typically is going to come from lists of folks, um, schools, universities. Brett's got a whole like package on how to do this. It's awesome. So first, um, I would I would get access to a Boolean string builder. If you don't have access, really quick and easy, you email me and I will give you access. 
Hmm. Now you're done. So now you have access to one. Uh, second, really important to know certain limitations that exist. So one of the big limitations that exists out there uh, is how many statements you can put into any given um, search uh, platform, right? Google, Bing, LinkedIn, et cetera. So I'll start with LinkedIn Recruiter because I hate it. And Stephen Covey tells me <laughs> if I want to be successful, you do the thing you hate first. Uh, so uh, on LinkedIn Recruiter, uh, some of the, the places that you're going to be looking, right? And, and uh, I think we're going to cover this and, and Brett's going to go into this deeper. Uh, first names. And I know if you're saying, well, that's not going to give us a really great or like comprehensive total list. Yes, you're totally right. Nothing is going to give you a comprehensive total list, including DNI filters on sourcing platforms. They're still going to miss folks. They're still going to bring folks back that aren't uh, a, an exact match. The goal isn't to nail every single person in one search. The goal of this is to be able to build this up and so that you're able to find the folks um, through, you know, whatever series or however many searches you need to run. So important to note, this is going to sound really crazy. First names work really well. Brett will probably go in how to find that. Why do first names work really well? Uh, because uh, with LinkedIn Recruiter, you can put in, not joking, 729 first names right? 730, doesn't work. 728, totally fine. 729, totally fine. 730, busted. I swear to God, it's weird as heck, right? For companies, also very interesting, you can put in a Boolean string of up to 500 companies. I believe you can actually do a little bit more than that. Um, I've had success doing it with 500 and then just over that. So important again to note when you find companies who employ or uh, a lot of DNI candidates or, or have a really big DNI search uh, or big DNI um, strategy, you can use the company's section to do the exact same thing. Um, the keywords are where you're going to get a little held up, right? So keywords may be used for things like sororities and fraternities and stuff like that. Um, you only have about, about 122 terms here which doesn't, which sounds like a ton, but you'll wind up going through them pretty quick if you're looking at these lists um, of, of terms, right? So um, that's, that's when you're looking at uh, LinkedIn. Now, when we're looking at Google uh, for just straight Google searches, right? And again, we may want to site search on this, right? If we're going to do site, linkedin.com backslash in with it. Um, also, Fun little tip and trick, if you don't know this, uh, I can share with you offline how to do this. You can actually set up your your Chrome's uh, instance. So if you type in something here like LI and tab, I can search and it'll auto populate site colon linkedin.com backslash in. Really quick way of doing this, by the way. Um, so Google limit, uh, they say when you type out all of your and and your or statements here, that it's only 32 characters uh, or, or 32 um, terms. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, it's more than 32 terms. How do I know that? This is more than 32 terms and it fits here. So an interesting thing to note about Google, Google will give you more terms uh, uh, available here uh, with an or statement than a pipe. So why is that relevant again? Because we're gonna have longer lists of things, really important that you're using the maximum number of characters you can. I believe the pipes gives you 65 terms, uh, if I did my math correctly in the past. Yep, so this is exactly 65 terms. Uh, and that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna return there. Um, so uh, another, uh, another interesting piece, using and statements. People say, oh, well, you de don't need to use and statements anymore. They're automatic check this out. No, they're not because this is the exact same search as this without and statements and you wind up getting a much different search result, right? And I know if you're thinking to yourself right now, well, that's an estimate. That's not an exact number. These two numbers <laughs> are not close enough to be an estimate. If that's how your estimation works, you should be a meteorologist because that shit is way off. <laughs> <laughs> right? So it actually gives a different number of results. And then the last one I'm going to touch on is Bing. And then I'm going to leave it to Brett to kind of go through some of the, the cool sourcing -y stuff. So check this out, bing.com. 
when you are on Bing.com, you have a total of 1,000 characters, right? So if I write Nissan, right, it's not letting me fill in the A and the N here. So this works no problem. Yay. But when I come all the way to the end and I try to add, you'll see it's a lot, right? A thousand characters is a lot, right? But then I try to add on uh, Nissan, it stops me. That's literally as far as I can go. However, check this out. In the URL bar, if you type in bing.com and hit tab, see how it says search Bing? Now I'm going to recopy it. I can come up here. I'm going to paste the exact same thing, but watch this or Nissan or I don't know, Suzuki or, you know, whatever Brad Feig drives, probably uh, bitch and Tesla, right? True Ooh. story. I had, I had an Eagle Talon almost my entire life before I moved to the city. That, oh my God. I wanted one of those from speed. Eclipse. So it, bad. That's that exactly what it looked like an Eclipse. I know. Yeah, a red body, black top. Yeah, but they were speed. so much better. They were so much better. I. They were. We're, gonna talk, we're gonna talk about that in a separate thing, but check this out, guys. <laughs> Scroll all the way to the end and look, all of that now fit. So what do we learn here? We learn that when we do bing.com tab in the URL bar, I have not found the limit yet. I'm telling you it's a huge limit to search for here. And it's a great place to put together these huge Boolean strings, sorry, uh, Boolean strings. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to find uh, these really comprehensive uh, lists of folks. Another thing is using Bing is a great way to diversify the candidates you're looking at. It's also typically the preferred way of, of X-ray searching through LinkedIn. Why do we say that? Well, the company that owns Bing.com is Microsoft and the company that owns LinkedIn.com is Microsoft. So those two things are going to typically help you. And if you're not sure and you're thinking, yeah, but am I really going to get that different of results? Well, let's find out. There's a great search engine. Brett, I'm, I know you know this already. Bing versus Google, right? Yeah. Check this out. Boom. Type it in there. Run a search for it. And it will physically show you Bing results side by side from Google results. And if you look at the first few people, right? Partha, Amity, Dennis, Ashish. Alexis, Rocky, Carolyn, Anjana, Anjana, right? Completely different search results for the exact same string. A great way to compare and contrast and see kind of what's getting you better results when you're building these strings. But without further ado, I'm gonna have Brett go into a little bit more detail now as to like the actual DNI portion um, and then he'll flip it back and we'll, we'll start running some searches here. So uh, yeah. Brett, take All it right. away brother. Let's, let's, let's get this up and, and running. Let's see, share my screen, share the right screen. Okay, everyone can see it. We're good to go? Yes, sir. Okay, so I wanted to take uh, an atypical approach for myself rather than jumping into something technical and don't get me wrong, we'll get there. I wanted to take it from the beginning. So if you're someone who's less technical, if you're someone who's, I don't want to jump into creating Boolean strings, but how do I come across talent that's tech and talent that also fits in a diverse standpoint? So we're going to take that from a really simple standpoint. Uh, a couple of, a couple of add-ons that I think you should have, especially when you're going through sourcing and none of these are, I'm not remaking the wheel here. Multi highlighter. If you don't have it, it's a great way to put in whatever keywords you need and it highlights it across your screen reduces some of that eye fatigue, right? Uh, staring at your screen and just mindlessly going through things. The other one I don't think has has received too much uh, publicity. It's called the link clump. And actually the icon kind of looks like a carrot. So I call it link carrot from time to time. But it does, a, it does one thing very, very well. It allows you to drag your cursor across the screen and any links that are available, it will either do one of two things. You could save it all into a folder, just doesn't matter if there's a thousand of them, they'll save it right into a folder or it will open it up as a new tab. So why do I find this useful? Because when you're going through this research process, a lot of times I'm, I'm going from the mass to the specific, meaning I want to open everything and I want to sort through it and I'm going to pull out and, and kind of save what I want and eventually hopefully have a, a bit of a short list at the end of it. So first step, always do your research, right? Um, 
couple sites you should check out. Diversity Reports gives you a sense both from a gender and from an ethnicity standpoint what companies are you know estimating their groups of underrepresented minorities are at the company now who knows how accurate this is to be quite honest but it gives you a sense of some companies that might be in your target range um, obviously if there's a company that's showing they're up in the 30s there's probably going to be a little bit more people to go for than companies that are down in the five percents that's one two take advantage of the marketplace right now layoff lists and i don't want to get too into this because I know Greg went over it extensively when he did this a couple months, uh, a couple weeks back. But there was one which I thought was really interesting. Um, let's see, let me pull it up for you guys here really quickly. There's one that speaks to specifically uh, companies that are uh, diverse candidates that are on the market. There we go. So I'll put the link to this in the chat, but someone created this. It's an Airtable specifically designed for, for black and Hispanic candidates who have been laid off, right? It's been growing. It's currently up to about 309. And if you're thinking, well, Airtable is a pain to scrape, true story. However, uh, this one forgot, or this one decided not to not to disable the download function. So you could actually download all 300 of them in a CSV. Gives you LinkedIn, location, some industry to filter on, right? So if you just want engineering, I don't even know how many of them are, are engineering, but you could filter on that, so on and so forth, right? So really low hanging fruit. These are people who likely on the market and likely looking, let's not, let's not make things any harder than they have to be. So let's get that off for a second. All right. I wanna start from the beginning and I wanna start really, really, really basic, right? Uh, diverse organizations, tech or technology. One giant sentence and combining the words, the diversity organization with two stars, which are variables. So any other two words separating that from either the word tech or technology, just to start at the biggest I can. And literally gonna go through some of this in real time. So just taking a look down, top 10 organizations, great, let's open that up. Um, 11 associations and organizations for IT, great. I'm gonna open that up in a new tab. In fact, I'm gonna close this out for a second so I don't close my, uh, break everything. Uh, let's see what else we have. 10 professional organizations focus on diversity and tech. Great, let's just start there. So go to the first link and what do we have? These are just companies that are, okay, so that's absolutely relevant. Let's close that one out. 11 organizations that are focused on, okay. American Associations of, of Blacks and Energy. So this seems somewhat relevant. Um, so I might bookmark this for, for later, but not, uh, not gonna help us for this specific search since we're focusing on technology. Um, and then here we go, some interesting ones. Black Girls Who Code, Blacks and Technology. So that's really good. So I'm gonna zoom out for a second and no, I don't want notifications. I'm gonna demonstrate this whole link clump thing. So just literally holding, it might have to zoom in to make this effective, but uh, literally just holding Z down and dragging down. You see how the links are all uh, kind of identifying by that right uh, bracket around it. What do we have down here? Those are all just articles, great. So I'm gonna release that and all of a sudden it's either gonna open those or save them to my list. So yeah, so it saved it all to a list. I actually wanna get it to open up right here because that was the part of it. Let's zoom out for one second and do this again. So I love doing it, doing it live. Let's grab that. Let's open some of those up and go from there. All right, let's start, let's start over here. So one of the first things that I came up with is a company called Tech Inclusion. And I realize that this is now off my screen, so let me put it on my screen. Um, 
which is great. A lot of conferences. So scrolling down, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for speakers, which I think is great. This just happens to be a bit of a treasure trove because they're showing what they've done for the past, I don't know, uh, five years. So just as a sampling here, let's check out New York and San Fran in 2008, New York in 2017, New York in 2016. Let's just open a bunch of them right there and see what we have here. So right now we're in, looks like a conference in New York in 2018. And what do I have here? A bunch of speakers with LinkedIn, uh, with LinkedIn addresses, which is great because this is 2015. So chances are they're not here anymore. They've gone somewhere else. So, you know, let's see if we could pull this into a quick list. And later Mike's gonna show using Zapier, which makes this a little bit easier. Uh, looks like it grabs pretty easily, but for the sake of this, I'm less interested in their current title and I'm more interested in their LinkedIn because I think their title has changed. So I'm just going to save that and I'm gonna open up a new tab in Sublime Tools. We'll talk about this later. I'm just gonna paste that there and move on to the next one. Great, here's one in 18, so on and so forth. Um, and as you see there, what's quite interesting is they all have speakers. Some of these have a, a lot of speakers. This one has quite a few amount of speakers. Now this is a tech inclusion. I'm seeing titles are all over the board. There are some people who are leading companies. There's some people focus on DNI, and it looks like some that are in tech. And I can kind of go through the same process and, uh, and put those into a spreadsheet, which we're going to show you one way to enrich that. So let's assume we're gonna move on from there because that's a great conference. And when I, when, I was, when I was going through this last night, there's probably over 700 contacts throughout just their speaker list going back to 2015. So that's 500 people that some of them have LinkedIn, some of them don't. Others have titles or maybe have a blank page you wouldn't ordinarily have found them. So let's skip away for that for a sec. Some of these aren't even opening up, which is interesting. Uh, and one of the links that I came across was this tech diversity resource, which has specialty programs. Now, if I wasn't afraid my computer would crash, I'd probably open up every single one of these in a new tab. As you see, I just did one column and already just it's starting to populate. So let's see how far I could go with this until it absolutely breaks down. So again, here's uh, an app camp, looks like for, for girls who program. Really quickly, I'm looking through it. Not trying to spend a ton of time, but are there any founders, anything I could grab? Board of trustees, some names here, but there's only five, so it's not gonna be worth my time in this demo right now, just for the sake of time. Chicks Who Tech in Seattle. Wow, live streaming slows down my feed significantly. We got some list of contacts there. Okay, that's interesting. And so on and so forth. And, and literally in the course of 45 minutes, I could probably pull 700 contacts or at least benchmark them. And uh, Mike will show some automation that makes that really easy to enrich it in a second. So let's look, let, as my computer is loading for a second, I wanted to go back to what Mike was talking about in terms of name gen. Now, if you're running a search, and this works really well in LinkedIn Recruiter, it does work as he was saying in Google, but if you're running a search, you have all your other criteria down, your code words, filtering or using a Boolean string of names is a great way to try to find people who maybe were born or, or immigrated from specific countries. And there's a bunch of ways to go about this. One of the easiest ways to do it is look for baby names in specific regions. For example, you could easily find if you do top, um, you know, list a, a country here, uh, you know, top Latam or let's do top uh, Latin America baby names. You could pull up huge sites right there uh, and you could find that for almost every country. So what I did prior and actually let's see if I have this saved for you guys. Let me just uh, get this off my screen for a second as I found two that I thought were are great to demonstrate really, really quickly. Let's 
see. Just to avoid having to scrape a whole bunch of, of data. Um, which ones did I like? Okay, yeah. So there's a website called uh, Scary Mommy. Let's just pull up that for a second. And I'm gonna close out some other tabs so my browser doesn't continue to, to drive, but meetups. So when this loads up, what, what this is, is a list of African last names, uh, whatever is popular within people who were born in that country for a while. And it was actually really easy to, to scrape. Now it's clearly not even loading up, but I'm gonna skip ahead since I already prepared for that. So one thing that is, I don't know if it's easier than uh, Mike's Boolean creator, but it really is fast on the fly. So for example, you know, I just cut and pasted the top 119 of this 200 list of traditional African surnames, uh, one in a line. If I want to make this into a quick Boolean string, Sublime Text is really great because it, it utilizes multiple cursors. I'll give you an example of what that means. That means that with a quick click, I could have cursors on every part of the line. So for instance, I could add quotes to everything as a whole even add the or, and then quicker than I did that, I could use a, a quick uh, regular expression, which basically is find every blank end of blank line, replace with nothing, replace with all, and all of a sudden I have a fairly large uh, Boolean string. Now I've done this to the point where I've crashed LinkedIn Recruiter, which is above that limit that Mike talked about. But then you could take this and paste this wherever you want, paste this in LinkedIn, paste this into, uh, actually, huh. let's see if this will crash Google. I have a feeling it's going to. Let's do a site, uh, let's do it the old fashioned way in and just see if it accepts that. And here's the website that I took it from, right? So it shows the origin, the names, and actually the meanings of these names. Um, let's go back to just Google for a second. And let's see if it uh, if it crashes or not. Okay, so it actually doesn't, and this is a pretty large list. And you could uh, let's see how many it's returning. Estimated four million. Clearly not going to show that many, but we could then refine this down with other with other uh, with other strings attached to it. Another thing that helps also, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this live. I haven't done this in a while. Let's see if this still works is adding, one of my favorites is adding at gmail.com into that. And let's say we were looking for, um, I don't know, black or Hispanic, just to name it two. And I don't want anyone who has that in its title. So I'm gonna take that out of the title. And let's see, let's see if that, if that works. Okay. So it, so it does actually work, showing people who actually list their uh, Gmail address in their LinkedIn. And then on top of that, well, let's add something sort of relevant to it. I don't know. Go oh, narrow here. Software developer. And we should probably uh, spell it correctly, especially if we're putting it in quotes. 17,000 results. And from there, we could actually import that into an enrichment program. I think that's where I'm gonna turn it back to Mike for a second to dive into Zap Info and a couple other ways. Sick. I have to actually stop sharing, don't I? No, not really. I'm sure she will want me to yeah, just take control over this. So uh, I, I went and ran a few uh, different searches that I wanted to run through and there they're fairly basic here, right? So I literally looked for like all HBCUs, right? Historically black uh, colleges, universities. Boom, and there's this list right here, which is right here. And then I did the same thing for sororities and fraternities, which is this list right here. Now, interestingly, I ran this search. And I've learned from hackathons that like sometimes just ask the Google machine what you want. 
And so I was like, I want a file type of a PDF. I looked for Excel first, it didn't come back with anything. And I literally wrote black employees to hire list, right? Because that would be amazing if someone had an Excel sheet of like every potential black candidate looking for a job. However, this came up and I was like, what in the world is that? And then I opened it and went, holy shit, that's awesome. Because here's just a whole bunch of sites that have some really cool stuff on them, right? So like you can look through and a bunch of these will have different places you can go um, for like conferences and things like that. So like when I see, oh cool, there was a, a Hispanic, um, cool, who we are, chapters, membership programs and events, right? That you want to go to and like just look in a, at an event and just scrape the event for it whoa, how'd you find this list? I literally just asked the Google machine for what I wanted and it gave it to me. Like, that's it. It, it even get complicated and crazy, but like, like Brett was showing you, like it's pretty straightforward if you just search for it and then see what happens and go from there. The other search I ran was for most common Hispanic last names. And this is given by namecensus.com. May or may not be relevant. They all look pretty okay to me if I'm being honest. So. What do you do now? Now you've got all these names and stuff. Good point, great question. So here's a list of all HBCUs. I'm a Zap Info fan. Why? Because I'm not as smart as Brett is and I need things to automate processes for me. Um, so I use this and I go zap in, bulk capture from page, which a lot of people don't know, contacts from list. And what it's gonna do is basically try to analyze everything on the page. You click highlight individual and look, Holy crap, literally highlighted every one of these. Confirm, I'm gonna map these to, I don't know, let's put it as just company to make it easier. It's not really gonna matter. Um, company, and I'm gonna add it to a list called HBCU. Boom, and let's extract it. And it'll take approximately mm, five seconds. I lied, took one, great. And now check this out, view records. And what you're gonna see is when I'm looking at HBCU, all of these different universities. And real easy, I go like this and I just zap all of them out. Um, I will go to a clipboard because I don't like dealing with Excel. Um, I, it's, I'm just another fun thing about me that I don't like. Um, there's a long list. So if you ever want like two hours, you wanna know. So cool. So on here should be a list of the companies. These are obviously not companies. These are obviously not com uh, uh, universities. These are all universities. Yeah, what the hell am I gonna do with that? Oh, thank you, I'm glad you asked. That's a great question. You're just gonna copy them and go to your Boolean builder. And ready for this? Paste. And then ready? Copy. I wanna paste just the values only. There's gonna be an or statement at the end. Remove that little jazz. And then look at that. You've got your universities. You can then go to the black devil, uh, blue devil, excuse me, um, and look for universities, right? LinkedIn, uh, gosh, I really hate using this, but I'll, I will show you, right? Um, you can plug into keywords if you want to, but you only have 122. So check this out, right? It's gonna, it's gonna come back with an error, I'm almost positive. Yep. Oh no, it didn't. It came back with, yeah, there it is. That right there is usually a sign that you are you have too many keywords uh, or you, <laughs> yeah, you have too many in here. Um, they're never gonna say like, no, oh, that's too many for us. It's too many, it, they can't handle that. Um, yep, come on, yeah. So regardless, we understand kind of how we're gonna do this. The better way I may look for something like that, I really thought universities was in here as an option. If it is and I'm missing it, somebody just like yell at me somewhere. Um, no, no. All right. Yeah, another disappointment from LinkedIn. Here's my big surprise face. So bing.com and then I want to go site colon linkedin.com backslash in and then ready. Boom. Plug all of those in and go and software engineer and I don't know, uh, what was it? Java for you know, S and G. Page can't be found. That's super cute. Bing.com, try it with this. Cool, so that somewhere in here is an error that I'm not seeing. 
Yeah, guys, see, this is why it's hard to do things live. And also just a note, there's no perfect way to do this. We all we all struggle with this. Uh, Alabama a and blah, blah, blah. So somewhere in here, I'm assuming within one of these quotes is something that the Boolean string, uh, the engine is not liking. So let's just cut it off here and kind of see what, what comes back. Let's go bing.com. Run it again. There it is. Maybe it just was too long, so we'll find out. We'll go to site. Yep, it was just too long for it. Just too long for it. So this one's going to be harder. You may have to break it up into different, um, uh, a couple of different searches. Right? I have the, I have it pasted here, which is what I did in the other screen. So you may have to just break this up, right, and just run a few of them, right? It'll be, it'll be what it'll be. You'll have to run a few different searches. Yeah, it's a big, it's a biggie. Um, Next though, you can come in, names a little bit easier to deal with, right? So here's the most common. Again, we're just gonna zap the crap out of it. I have no idea how many are on this page. I didn't scroll down. Contacts from list. That's a bad sign. Oh, it's not that bad. Yep, all right, it broke zap. So we'll have to go and just click in and copy and paste. So, boop, no grab, I don't know, grab, grab like these for now. We're gonna come in here, go to a new tab and paste. Great, that worked, thank heavens. Delete those and then again, we're gonna take these and we're gonna go to the other sheet and we're just gonna build a Boolean string, right? So we're gonna do this live again. Hopefully we get better results this time. Excellent. And there should be a bunch of or statements at the end of this. Um, once I paste it, boop, eliminate the or statements. All right. And now let's go back again, LinkedIn recruiter, and let's go last names. Boom, search, eliminate the schools. Search. 42 million, right? Because you'll see it actually fits in all of these last names. Then you can add in all the rest of your crap that you want to do. So uh, easy, easy way to do it. Hispanic last names are really easy to work with. Um, the only area that you have to be mindful of is there are times where non-Hispanic women marry Hispanic men, right? That happens a bunch. Uh, they, I don't believe, qualify, quote unquote, as DNI candidates. So just be mindful. Easy way to see is um, uh, is a language expertise Spanish. Did they go to a school um, in a Hispanic country? Do they have actual Spanish written on their profile? Pretty easy way to DNI it. Um, so that is another way. Obviously, the list of sororities and fraternities, another way that you can do this. Again, you copy and paste, put it in a Boolean string and, and go from there. So those are a few different of just the straight like Boolean sourcing, uh, scraping approaches to do this. Another thing that we can do to get, again, really basic is I literally went to, to Facebook. Over back home here. Facebook and I went black software engineers, right? It's in my history. Oh, look. Black web developers, programmers, and engineers. Oh, that's really awesome. And all of a sudden you have members right here. Can you see all of them? No, you cannot. Can you ask to join? Possibly. Is there a chance you can search to go through this? Brett may actually know this better than I can even, uh, whether you can include the group names within your search for, um, uh, within Facebook, their, their graph search got eliminated last June and it's just been a, yeah yeah it was working then it wasn't and i don't even know yeah so okay so aaron lynn suggested edge so yeah so by the way edge totally awesome uh which is weird because again i'm kind of anti-microsoft um but uh edge and the new edge and chrome kind of teamed up together so if you'll see all my bookmarks are still here it still has your chrome extensions that you have access to uh and honestly it's a bit faster so when I'm actually zapping and enhancing profiles, I'm typically gonna use Edge. So great suggestion, Aaron Lintz for the win. So check this out, guys. When you have a list of these LinkedIn URLs, right? And you may pull these from just about anywhere. Uh, I like using Zap because what I can do with Zap, if I'm gonna go find people. Okay, so here's a group of a bunch of people, right? So I'll just select like five of these. I just scrape them from a page. 
you can actually get the full profile and it will automatically click in and gather all of the data. I'm not gonna go through the process because as you can see, it's struggle bus right now with everything I have open. But what it'll do is it'll enrich all of the data for you that you got from the LinkedIn URL. So what's the value of doing that? Well, what it does is it means that you can search on, on fairly non-traditional sources. So let's say you wanna search on Instagram. I'm not doing this from Bing, uh, sorry, Microsoft. Uh, so let's say you wanna search on Instagram, right? And you want, um, I don't know, black or African American. Um, and I don't know, let's go software engineer or developer or coder programmer or let's run a search. No, nothing came back. I thought that would be a little bit tough. Let's just run the search like this. Again, nothing came back. That's great. Uh, maybe I should put in the dot com at the end. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that makes more sense. Cool. So let's just try this one more time here. Um, and some cool tips and tricks around this for everybody. So software engineer uh, or programmer or coder or develop. Why do I put quotes around everything? It's just a habit. It's not a good habit. You shouldn't do that, right? So check this out. Once I have these results back, I look at, okay, what's appearing in the URL? Liked by, I don't want that. I just want um, people's profiles. So I go um, uh, minus in URL and then go likes by and anything else here showing up. There's normally like coders and stuff like that. All right, and now let's add in a fun little one because what do you do once you have the, the list of people from Insta, right? Or are you really gonna go back and forth? Or can you go in text, linkedin.com backslash in and see what comes back? Oh, check this out. Ready for this? Boom, boom, let's open these up and see what comes back, right? All right, I want to see here uh, some type of DNI, I'm assuming, but I'd have to look deeper into the background. But look, their LinkedIn URLs right there. Look, LinkedIn URLs right there. Look, LinkedIn URLs right there. And so what you're doing is you're making it at least upfront a little bit easier to search through, right? And maybe in this case, um, the, the black search term is not helping anybody. So we can change it a little bit. I don't see a lot of people coming back. Yep, which is fine. Um, and so, uh, easier way to kind of uh, search through and find useful and meaningful data. Same thing, by the way, guys, can literally be done on Twitter, right? If you're including that all text function, what you're doing, oh, quote, stop word stemming. Thanks, Brett, I appreciate you. Um, what you're doing is making sure that these folks have their profile, right? So when we click through, um, let's eliminate in URL media, right? Uh, in URL statuses, how am I seeing that? This is a piece of the URL. This is a piece of the URL status, the URL, cool. Um, boop minus in URL status just for posterity. And let's take a look at what we got here, right? Uh, nope. Nope, that was a tweet. Nope, Steve Watt, you are not the guy for me. Nope, probably not. We'll have to look through a little bit here. You're not located in the same place. Okay, so that search result was crap and garbage. So that one's not gonna work. Um, <laughs> but you, yeah, sweet. Um, what you can do though is do a search, this is gonna seem weird, African-American around, I don't know, like 35 or so from the word follow. And what this tries to do is make sure that this word appears at the top of their profile, right? So if we're looking, the word follow appears up here, following followers, you could choose something else here. Um, followed if you really want to. Oh, joined was the one that worked really well. Hang on. This is what happens when you don't do this every day. It gets super rusty. Boom. So now let's take a look at what appears here, right? Yep, there it is, black African-American. It's however many words away from the word joined up top. Cool, Catherine, not so much. Nick, not so much. All right, 25%, that is a failing grade anywhere. 
Um, but uh, generally, you're gonna have to play around with this a little bit. But what, what I hope you're seeing is when you're using around functions, you can make around functions to a word that will put it towards the top of the list. How do we know what words those are? On Twitter, it's the word joined. Everybody has this at the top of their page and it's an actual word. It's not like a link to click on, right? Same thing on the Instagram posts. Um, the word up top on Insta is, let me open it and just show you. Um, you typically wanna look at posts, right? That's a real word up top. These are not, these are links, uh, links that you click. So if you do it around whatever, 35 from posts, you'll get the same result of folks up here. Um, outside of that, guys, just ask Google for what you're looking for. Scrape the lists, get a Boolean string builder, build those Boolean strings out, and then boom, search here. The last piece, I'm not gonna go into this and actually show you. Most of the actual sourcing platforms, by the way, have diversity filters with them. So like you, you can actually look for whatever type of diversity tag you want um, on any of these. So projects, and if I wanna actually go through the sourcing, I'm not gonna go through and create this right now. Um, Amazing Hiring has the exact same thing, and so does Loxo. All of these have the built-in uh, diversity filters. And so I think we've got like 13 minutes left. Brett, yep. uh, anything else you wanted me to cover? Go yeah, this? yeah, I will uh, I'll you, steal your good? screen back Nailed for it. a minute. Uh, so a, a couple of interesting things, and that's why I, that's why I really enjoy some of this broad-based sourcing because it's a bit of a rabbit hole. You kind of start one place and something else triggers like, oh, got to try that, got to try that, and it leads to other things. One interesting thing you could do is there's a lot of VC firms that are now um, growing that focus purely on uh, firms that are being started or run by uh, women and unrepresented minority groups. For example, Pipeline Angels. Now, this has, I'm going to guesstimate about 40 uh, different people that are listed as mentors and or speakers. So while they not might not be the first step or the last step on your journey, I should say, uh, I bet you not a lot of people are reaching out to them for the sole purpose of trying to network, right? Or trying to see who they know. I bet they bump into a ton of people, you know, they couldn't hire at their investment firm that are looking for positions. Just kind of an odd way to go about it. Uh, another good thing is why not focus on top lists, right? So a lot of companies have, you know, 40 under 40, 30 under 30, 20 under 20, whatever the case is. So I kind of took that concept and threw in front of it some, you know, diversity keywords, black or Hispanic, uh, or LGBTQ or diversity, just to broaden it out. And what I, I should probably done is encase this in quotes. So I get kind of the permutation of anything in in this combined with the word under and then anything in here um and you'll see opens up some other things tech diversity 40 under 40 let's open that up uh digital diversity network is that different than the one above it looks to be uh forbes 30 under 30 archives um black women of forbes 30 under 30 and this literally goes on and on and on different groups that truthfully I've not even heard of, uh, even stemming out into lawyers and other areas. So maybe I didn't have enough tech keywords in there. But you know, I could have a field day going through each one of these and just in real time saying, okay, what do they have? They have a list of conferences, a list of names, a list of founders. Uh, let's see, awards, 2019 Innovation and Inclusion Award, past awards and here we go, 40 under 40 in a 2015 class, which I like because you know, the information is a little bit outdated, but perhaps it's people who are not on LinkedIn or uh, who the average person isn't looking at a 2015 list. So I think that's a little bit different. Now uh, here's, let's open those up to see if that gives us anything or not. Doesn't look like it's giving us anything. There's an event gallery, but here we go. 40 into 40 tech diversity. And each of these have LinkedIn, which is great. We try to scrape it a number of ways. Just see if it's a data scraper, we'll pick it up. It doesn't, it does. It's just a little bit wonky on how it goes about it because it has this blank line in the middle. 
So these LinkedIn aren't truly matched up, which is fine because it's outdated. So what I did is I took this and uh, a variety of other LinkedIn links. And I'm gonna show you a cool way to enrich it that's free for 30 days. And I added it to this giant list I have here. Assuming a lot of these are outdated, a lot of these are also duplicates I'm seeing now. Let's just dedupe it for a second, paste it into LinkedIn. Uh, get rid of that line. Oh, whoops, wrong list. That was from something else. There we go. Let's copy this list. Paste it here. Just do a quick data dupe, nah, they dupe which I will do by, or is it uh, remove duplicates? Column age, only column I have. Okay, 140 unique values. Let's call that a, a LinkedIn. I'm just gonna save it as a CSV for a second. Uh, And I thought it was about to crash my computer, but it's not. Let's see if it has a uh, comma separated values. Uh, let's call it um, then. Yes, that's fine. And I'm gonna get out of here for a second. Now, I've been playing around with this program called We Connect or We Connect.io. It's basically a drip marketing feed specifically for actions on LinkedIn. However, uh, and I'm gonna go to folders here. It has a really unique element that allows you to upload. Let's not create a campaign. I just really wanna add a list at this point. It allows you to update, a, upload a list from a CSV or from an actual LinkedIn or LinkedIn sales search, I think. But we're gonna do CV for a second. Let's see if I've mucked it up at all. It works. Let's save it. We only have one thing in there, so that's all we need. And let's go next. Uh, let's just call this uh, diversity uh, enrichment. And I'm assuming it's all two or three. I don't know how that impacts it, to be honest with you. And let's go ahead and have that run. And what this is doing, it's taking, I guess, 138, and it's pulling any information it can just from the LinkedIn profile. So as you see right here, it's this is all, all we fed it was just LinkedIn URLs nothing else and it's pulling all the most recent and it's generally pretty quick some of them aren't coming through and you see those as nulls which is fine uh and some of them might take a couple minutes or two but you see a lot of them are are coming through and actually once it was already done i could actually pull it out uh, and do whatever i want with it pull it right back into a csv but instead of getting just those initial urls meaning that's all we had it's now enriched it with uh a whole lot more data, right? We have last name, we have LinkedIn, we have title, we have company. I'm just gonna separate this so we could determine if education, location, address, industry, website, even, you know what? I'm gonna do that for a second. Uh, it even got a few, not many emails. I'm guessing those are people that are either open networkers or I have them in my network and shows me how many connections each one has. I'm not actually entirely sure if that's accurate, but really easy way in, in 30 seconds to enrich it. You could do the same thing in Zap. This I believe will allow you to do this for free, even with the free version. I know it's 30 days, all inclusively free. Uh, I gotta see what happens when it expires, but just a super way to make that happen. And I'm gonna stop there. I had, you know, we could obviously do the same thing with all the other lists find special recognition, change agents, so on and so forth. But I know we have five minutes left, so I'm gonna stop there uh, and open it up for sort of group discussion if anyone has any questions or... We definitely showed a lot of diversity in our diversity attempts here. This was really, really good. I've been monitoring the, um, the chats and, uh, you know, I, I wanted to end with a couple things. First and foremost, this was fantastic. I don't know that there's tools out there that would be able to pull all this information. It was one of the questions that has been asked by to me by talent acquisition leaders who we speak to. We have a board of advisors and of course the conference. But one of them was, 
you know, couldn't we just use tools like Hire Tool or Seek Out or any of those sourcing tools? That, yeah, I think you mentioned Luxo and Amazing Hiring. Um, can't they pull all this information in for us? And um, to that, I mean, what would you what would you recommend, Mike and Brett? I mean, just purchasing a tool, or I mean, obviously, it's it's good to know the foundation of the Boolean, the Boolean searches. But what would you say to that? Um, I think there's not one tool that does all of it uh, because sites are built in different ways. Zap is the one that I've seen that handles the most well-rounded in terms of all of it. Uh, and Mike, I think you could probably speak really knowledgeably on this, but I think a lot of the platforms. Um, they do they do a lot of that, or at least they claim to scrape the open web to find contacts. But as far as I know, there's not one tool that does it all. Yeah, yeah, it's not Lord of the Rings. No, no one tool <laughs> to rule them all. Um, you know, the, the the truth is just like any other search that we're doing, right? Like last names, schools, sororities, fraternities, etc. Uh, you're never encapsulating everything, right? And you're always gonna have false positives, which I showed like 75% of mine apparently. Um, however, uh, does do these platforms automate a large chunk of it? Yes. Are they perfect? No. Why? Because the way they do it isn't perfect, right? They're gonna run the searches in the background for the HBCUs, the fraternities, all the things that denote that like, you are almost definitely of a particular race or, or DNI uh, segment. Um, however, what they also do, and none of them will admit to this, um, but like, if you use the tool, you'll just see for yourself. Uh, some of it is image recognition. And like, when you're talking about black people, for example, there's different shades of every human on earth, right? Um, and so you're going to have people get in who maybe aren't the right fit and, and vice versa. Um, and so will the tool help you? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, the question on tooling is always the same, right? Uh, or, or the answer to tooling is always the same. Um, how many man hours are you spending right now to do it? Uh, and what's the cost of your man hours to do that? And what's your ROI on that? Versus what's the cost of the tool, the implementation of the tool, and that includes training, uh, and then the use of the tool. Uh, uh, timing wise, right? Compared to the to the, the cost of the original option. And like, at the end of the day, one of them is gonna be higher and you'll be surprised. Uh, typically, uh, typically you'll find um, in larger companies where you're doing uh, a ton of a similar type of search, tooling may make more sense, but the problem is people don't come at it from a data perspective. They're like, we need it, we can't find this. Like, yeah, of course, right? If you found enough of those candidates, you still wouldn't have enough of them, right? Um, we're recruiters. And so come at it with data. Track how many hours you spend doing it. What's your salary? Divide it by two, that's your hourly rate, roughly, right? Cool, report on what it costs them for you to do this work. And then look at what it would cost you to use a different tool to do the same thing. Definitely the training is gonna be the other thing that companies need to consider because and, and this, again, um, you know, for a talent acquisition or HR leader, or what have you, who's in charge of purchasing, for them to justify that purchase, their recruitment teams need to be trained on using that tool. And that's just another allotment of time. So, I mean, it's just those two kind of considerations, but what's the alternative just kind of staying in, you know, doing what, hanging out on LinkedIn or just doing your Boolean searches. Um, <laughs> but that's what this that's what the show is all about and what I'm gonna forever i'm gonna forever call it boolean moving <laughs> yeah. forward i can't like boolean boolean strings thank you for making this such a fun show we really i've learned so much and um i will repost this for everybody you can see it on our uh, Tech Recruit YouTube channel. Um, you can also go to techrecruit.io and look for all of the updates for our next shows. We'll be back here every Tuesday. Before we leave for today, Brett, what if anybody has any questions, what's the best place for people to reach out to? Um, reach out to really anywhere. LinkedIn, Facebook. I mean, you could probably find my cell phone number. Hint, it's 516 <laughs> area code. It's sort of like a price entry. Uh, I'm very responsive. Just send me a note. Uh, if you find my number and you text me, you'll get an instant response. 
Okay. Remember, yeah. guys, if you text him 35 times, he'll give you his <laughs> Boolean info. <laughs> and send me inappropriate pictures. Just horrific yeah, that's stuff. Right. Yeah. That's exactly just right. Just flood it. Just ruin my, ruin my marriage and my family. It's totally fine. Yeah, I'll explain yeah. that one to my wife. No, no, no. I, I, I go to them to do it. I said, send me horrible things. Look at Mike posting all your contact information. <laughs> all right, Mike Cohen, same question to you. If anybody has any additional questions, how can they get hold of you? And I think you had a tool that you were going to send to people. Is that right? Uh, the Yes, yes. I have the Boolean operator, the builder. So if you email me, my email's in the chat over here, um, or you Facebook message me, which I'm putting in right now, you're going to notice a trend on all of these. Uh, Hopefully you can just piece together literally where I am on every social site now. Um, just reach out. I'll, I'll send you guys whatever you want. I'm pretty open source about that. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see everybody next Tuesday at 9 a.m. And tomorrow on the Talent Analytics Show, we have Ian Cook from Vizier, who's going to talk about talent analytics. And it's going to be an incredible show. All we're talking about is research and tools and how to find people and use that for hiring. Until then, you guys have a great week. Bye-bye.